Alright and welcome to the book review report for Terry Goodkind's Wizard's First Rule. Now, the idea behind the book review report is that this is a review report. In other words, I'm not going to every single detail of the book. I'm not examining every single detail of the book. I'm just doing overall review of it. I'm not, if I wanted to do something like an audit style of report, then I would go into every single detail, verify every single detail if it's done properly or correctly. In this case, it's not. This is general, general overall review with some things that I did go into detail and some things I'm not going to go into detail. So, Ritter's first rule is the first book in the series of The Sword of Truth by Terry Goodkind. There's also other ways to call that series. I saw names such as uh, Richard and Carl on novels or something like that. Um, I'm going to use Sword of Truth because, well, that more or less seems to be the common name for it. Overall, I found this novel interesting but tedious and only engaging at the very end. And the reasons for that I will explain as I'm going through, especially if, uh, talking about the narrative for the book. That's where it mostly comes, uh, comes to. The reasons why I found this book very tedious and not engaging. Now, the reason I found this book interesting was actually the descriptions of the world and the magic that, this, there is, that are done throughout the book. Overall, the book is a work of fantasy and it focuses on kind of ordinary events, things happening, so there's not a lot, of some, in some cases, of magic, and there's some magic, but magic is not the main element here, but that's a very main supportive element, I would say. Now, the audience for this book is, well, I can say, a young adult audience, and some of the teenage audience. And when I mean young adult audience, I do not mean the way a young adult audience is usually presented by the, li by the libraries or overall the book publishing industry where it's like, oh yeah, young adults, but um, we actually mean kids. No, this is young adults. And that was adults who are young. We're talking about uh, demographic somebody who finished high school or maybe in the last years of high school and maybe five years from there uh, going on. So that kind of, that slice of demographic seems to be the audience for this book because Otherwise, if I look through all the other through all the other elements, that especially the narrative, it becomes pretty clear that those are the elements that the this that will enjoy this book. Other ones, I think, will be more frustrated the way I was actually when I was uh, when I was reading it. And that's when we get onto the biggest frustration comes from the actual narrative of the book and. The first and biggest frustration to me, and something that I really, really hate quite often when it's done is the idea that there's a chosen one. The novel really pushes this here. There's a chosen one and this chosen one is gonna save the world. Of course, it has to be the world. That's another thing that I don't really like, but fine. Uh, but, you know, putting character as a chosen one, branding that character so much, is just ridiculous. I'm willing to accept the character that becomes the chosen one, that grows into that kind of role, that ends up in that role, whether it's uh, the true so or not to, but when the person is just, in, you know, a few chapters in, said, oh, you're going to be the one who has to save the world, that's kind of ridiculous. And then, of course, the, the even worse fact is that how it's being rubbed in throughout the whole novel. It's like, which it's like the author is trying to emphasize this that oh yeah I know you were chosen you were chosen by fate <sighs> really this is this is not exactly something that I, I really like you have every single main support character saying yeah, this guy is the chosen one. Yeah, you are the chosen one. So here's here's what we're gonna do. This is even gets better, right? We're not gonna make any more choices. We're not gonna make any choices on our actions. You're gonna make ch choices. Yeah, we are this little group of people that go out to do on this mission, this quest. But hey, you are the chosen one, so you're gonna lead it. And this is ridiculous because the chosen one is a young character who's literally new to that world that he entered. He got no experience in it. Actually, people who have experience in that world are the ones who, who pushing all the authority for decision from them 
to the chosen one and they're not even providing much of a uh, advice they're like okay you know hey you know we got this problem so um yeah chosen one tell us what you're gonna do now what the heck does make sense that doesn't doesn't make sense why would you, why would say uh, would you do that and there's also an internal monologue that they that happens basically it's an the, the narrative describes the thought patterns of the characters and so the main character has this thought patterns where it says like, well I'm the chosen one I have to be the one to solve this problem really like this is just one of the biggest uh, uh, frustrations for me because let's face it in the normal world that's the one that we living one living in not the book world there's no such thing as a chosen one there's no person who's pointed out by fate or person who's like yeah yeah you go and do it we, we kind of don't have that kind of going on we do not we do not have people uh elders or somebody who have more experience and, uh, and authority just suddenly yielded to this guy and said oh yeah you know yeah you young guy person you you're in charge now Actually, I think that that's usually only done is just in case you know if something goes belly up, they can blame that person. And say, well, he was in charge, but that's the only reason you would somebody, somebody would actually do some something like this. So it makes the narrative really unbelievable in that case. Like uh, again, this chosen one again, this whole chosen one stuff. Okay, fine. I, I think I already beat it to the such extent that the the, the horse is already dead. And that again. Okay, so the second problem. The second problem is the sexual tension. Ah, uh, that's another one. For two thirds of the book, the main character and the main supporting female character are have feelings for each other, but cannot express them because reasons. They give a bunch of reasons. They give, and. They constantly remind us of those reasons. Uh, almost every single chapter, there's a reminder when the character's thinking through, "Oh, we can't do that. Oh, you know, there's something wrong. There's a, that. You know, I need to preserve this friendship, and, uh, and that's the reason I cannot go out and tell that this person that I love this person. No, oh, you know, the, my main quest is so terrible that you know I might not come back, and therefore, you know, I, can, I don't want to have any that kind of labels." Oh. For two thirds of the book, we have this kind of stuff. This is what actually kills the pacing of the book. This is what makes it so unengaging. Because as soon as that is out, by the, you know, by the last third of the book, they finally talk this out. Everybody becomes aware of all the problems, and everything. Suddenly, you know, the pacing picks up because we don't need all this crap anymore to be repeated again and again and again and again and again. How many times do I have to read through it? I get it, they had these problems there. You see, that would have been the, actually the interesting situation if the problem was not told to the reader. If I was not being made aware of what, why they can't be together, then I would be trying to figure it out, just basing on that internal thinking. But no, I already know the reasons. It's already been told to me. Now, the only people who are not aware is those two main characters. You know, they are the ones who are experiencing this is the only ones. Everybody else actually around them, all the other main support characters actually pretty much understand the situation. Everybody does. And so we have constant reminders of something that everybody already knows and I already know and I don't need a reminder every time. This is a this was a section actually there when I would I just really want to close the book or did some other things like I flip through to to see further into the book because I was getting bored and see if, to see if I know if it's worth reading the rest of it. And that's actually a very bad thing. And this are the two reasons I think this is meant for young adult audience. Because the idea of the chosen one kind of sits in better with the younger audience since they kind of feel themselves that they, they're the ones who have the answers and that they can in deliver this answer, this new fresh perspective that nobody else can, the, the older and the more experienced ones cannot. Uh, the fact that 
this is kind of appeals to the audience that oh yeah well I'm the one I'm the one who's gonna make this uh, changes I'm the one who's gonna make the world a better place yeah so it kind of fits in there and then of course the uh, sexual tension well I think that's also part of it yeah. and because I don't really see that much well this thing going on this long between two two adults uh, really that they're gonna decide yes it's going this is gonna happen I know it's not gonna happen if, if they want to something see it to happen they'll try to you know appro deal with it if it if the other person is separates or the other person does not separate that's it end of end of story they they will move on because to me the whole sexual tension reminds of uh, you know of high school awkwardness between uh, the two you know teenagers who don't know how to deal with what uh, with the hormones basically now another little problem is uh, well, it's not a, I would say it's actually not a little problem, it's still a problem, is the evil characters. We don't have real motivations for evil characters given, they're very cardboard cut out characters. It's like, yeah, he's evil, and we gotta stop them. Uh, because yeah, there's, there's several evil characters, but let's say the main one, there's no motivations given. Why does this evil character wants to do what he wants to do? What's the reasons? Nothing. No, nothing is really provided. And this is a book that actually talks about looking at uh, seeing things from multiple perspectives. At least two perspectives, it's always emphasized this idea that this from other person's perspective there could be uh, things, uh, they could perceive things differently, right? And I'm going to talk about that in the theme section. But here we have the evil characters and we already know that, yeah, this guy is evil and that's it, end of story. Nothing, nothing else is given. Well, kind of, that kind of, that, that kind of, again, it's like painting the world black and white, even though you're trying to say that there's, you know, it's all shades of gray. Or it's like, oh, there's shades of gray and then there's black. Right? So that's it. Really? Okay. Uh, there were some interesting plot twists. Uh, for me, they were not that interesting. I was able to foresee a, a bunch of them. And so, to, to me, it was like, okay, yeah, okay, okay, I see what's going to happen, okay, this is going to happen, okay, it happened. So, but uh, there were some interesting plot twists, and uh, I would acknowledge that. I would acknowledge that uh, this book has a very interesting world it created. This, uh, this world has a very good base, and I think if the, maybe if the whole internal monologue of uh, main characters about why they love each other, why they cannot be with each other, and the whole idea that this person is the chosen one was a bit, you know, reduced. Maybe there was more uh, space for this kind of development of the world. Because the world has a lot of different people living, it has different creatures, there's a lot of cre magical creatures, there's a different description of dragons. There seems to be a lot of things that's possible in this world, a lot of uh, interesting things, but the rest of the book is just, as, as I mentioned, the rest of the narrative just kills it. There's an interesting magic system in this world. There's not much of it explained, but it's there, and it's emphasized that there's different kinds of magic because different people have different kinds of magic. And again, there's, there's a lot of there to build on, and uh, it's kind of interesting. It, 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 it actually kept me, one of the things that kept me reading, and I think that's a uh, that's uh, again something that could have maybe been explored more, could have been more explained. But it's uh, there's some explanation, but there's not a lot. It's like the the explanation of how the magic works is very secondary in this case. So now let's talk about themes. There was an attempt to really push in some of the themes. It seems to me, uh, but because this was a attempt to really press them in, they were not really much explained. I will g explain, to the, explain that a bit later. First of all, I would like to talk about the very good themes. The very good themes are such, such as perception of truth. The idea that the truth is not absolute, but a perception of one person. In other words, a person who perceives something, they can actually see something as true, without 
real knowledge and this actually works a lot and this explains that you can possibly do trick people into believing things this way through perception of, of different facts and that's a very very interesting theme another thing is asking questions the idea that you gotta question things because without that you cannot ascertain the actual facts and truth because other things could be presented to you wrongly or you can see things wrongly without asking this kind of questions into question things a very good theme a very good theme there's a theme on anger and forgiveness and that is almost a overall redeeming element of the book almost not completely and the reason is that it stresses the idea that Forgiveness is actually something that needs to be emphasized, that needs to be over anger, over the idea that you need to punish somebody, but the idea that you have to f be able to forgive somebody who done wrong to you. It's a very interesting theme and it's very well presented. It's presented as a stronger idea and it's reinforced as such. Now, let's talk about some of the Secondary themes. Well, the secondary themes are the tough choices that has to be made, and it's uh, you know it's in this book because the way it's made, you know, the chosen one makes all the tough choices, and he has to make those tough choices since nobody really will make those choices f or even provide much help with those choices. Uh, <laughs> that becomes a very big theme: the idea that you have to make choices, and you not always be able to make you know the best choice because none of the options are that great. There's a good uh, discussion of fortune telling and the idea that, oh, well, maybe you should be believing in all the fortunes that are told to you because uh, it talks about such things as, uh, well, you're gonna actually fulfill the prophecy because you're gonna, uh, because you're gonna enact it yourself be because you believe in it or it's, as one way. Uh, that's a very interest interesting theme and a very good theme to, uh, to talk about. Now, there's a number of what I could say incomplete are uh, uh, not really developed themes. Number one is because it's a, uh, well, it's actually overall the same theme. It seems to be some kind of a uh, development towards talking of the communist uh, regimes that we had in our history. And what happening is that, well, besides the whole idea that, you know, the the evil guys are in the east and the good guys are in the west but we also have the whole idea such as such as a cult of personality cult of, of a person being perceived as a living god we have that but again but it's not uh, not really developed nothing really goes much into that as it's mentioned oh, here the cult, cult of personality and you're gonna say it's okay so so what so what's the problem here well, we're not gonna talk about that. No, we're just gonna say it's there. It's like it's as if those things being thrown into just to make the evil character more perceived evil, from our perspective. I don't know. Maybe that's 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 why the themes were now developed. But okay, so back to some other stuff. We have uh, the blind following, the idea that you follow a person blindly without questioning. It kind of goes against the whole asking questions, but the danger of blind follow following is never really emphasized and there's also of course the whole terminology used people's palace people's army is, is used uh, again this is the reference to the communist uh, type of state uh, regimes where that was the case there's even discussion of uh, wealth distribution the, the ideas such as collectivization for it when it comes to farming taking away you know crops from one farmer to giving them to other people the idea that uh, people are making profits and that's a, that and that is evil being perceived as such because one side is in, is enforcing this kind of a communist type of system but then again showing that the ruling class is not exactly following the system themselves and it, it's there but it's not developed again it's kind of like on the side I'm not exactly, as I said, like maybe it's done to make the evil characters evil. Like if you have a, you know, one of the evil characters become made a pedophile, so that it's pretty clear that we're gonna be repounded by that. You know, we're not gonna really like that character at all. You know, let's, that's a kind of classic type of move. Let's give the character a really, really bad trait rather than 
provide some kind of reason else. Since uh, that guy is more supporting character, minor supporting character, I have no problems. But like I mentioned, the main evil character, well, his motivations are never even disclosed. Uh, literary devices. Well, there's nothing really that much really stands out and jumps out. This is of course a nice little, little uh, last name of a, of a person's uh, use, such as we have a last name uh, Cypher being used, and of course that means a riddle, and uh, of course there's a riddle to be solved in a way. And of course that kind of, an, it's, a, it's a very nice little literary device, uh, the first time you see, you, you see it, you immediately understand that there's you know, more than the meets the eye here, and that we need to go into more detail, and eventually the riddle gets I don't know if it's completely solved, or maybe that's what uh, it's left aren't completely solved for future books, but I don't know why would you do that completely like that. Uh, I think it's pretty much solved by the end of the book. The writing style. Writing style is actually pretty good. You have a very good descriptions, very dis good descriptions of the action, very w well made that uh, ability to keep tension, suspense, uh, during those descriptions, you know, if it wasn't for those uh, long thoughts about why, you know, what the chosen one and how being chosen one means that you have to, you know, fulfill your destiny, that kind of stuff, or the long thoughts about why you can't be with the person you love, uh, I think the, the, the writing style would have been really, for me, in, interesting and I would have enjoyed it those things actually were destroying it at the same time. So I was running into that, I'm like, ah, again with this. So in that case, you know, the pacing was going immediately down and, but I, as I mentioned, otherwise the writing style is pretty good. And once you, the last third of the book starts, all the, the problems that I mentioned before go away and the writing style is the really shines at that point. The reading style this uh, novel is meant for is not for a person who is reading it in short periods of time, because a person reading in short periods of time would not be able to really read it. Going, going in, sitting down, and going through one of those uh, long descriptions of thoughts will be enough to stop the person from reading and really prevent that person from coming back. The person needs to work through that in order to get to the next action section or the next uh, event section is to continue on to be engaged in the actual reading of the book. So overall I would say that it's a book with an interesting world. But it's not again engaging because of the way the narrative is, ma is made. By the end of the book, the narrative picks up. But that, but that time is already too late really to pick up the narrative because a lot of the audience would have quit before already. So it's something. So again, again, the pacing is what really kills this book.